Hi everyone, Lisa here from Down to Earth Gardening. I'm out in the garden today bringing you this beautiful plant, uh, lamb's ear. And this is really a two-part video. So first part is what I love about lamb's ear and some how-tos. And the second part is going to be about drying lamb's ear. I love plants that I guess serve a purpose um, and this one serves a few purposes but it's such an added bonus that you can dry it and bring it inside for some crafts you can make some really lovely winter wreaths out of the lamb's ear foliage um, and it also makes a really pretty decoration for gift wrap for some holiday wrapping so fun video for you um, so the lamb's ear I've been using this uh, particular plant and my designs for a very long time but I have to tell you that originally when I used it um, I used the variety that threw up these long flower stalks which um, in my opinion the lamb's ear use is really more for the foliage um, than the flower. The flower isn't particularly interesting so what I used to do is just trim the flowers down pretty immediately because again I didn't want it to take away from the foliage I really wanted the plant to shine as more of a mounding border plant or a ground cover and the reason why I love to use it in designs is because it really brings this silvery gray or sage foliage to the garden um, and makes it a little more interesting. I like to think about foliage as well as flowers when I'm doing a design. And it's got this gorgeous texture. It's very soft. Um, really does feel literally like a lamb's ear. But then I came across a non-flowering lamb's ear variety which now is the only variety that I use of lamb's ear, and that's what this is. And this is called Helen Von Stein. And I really love it because I don't have to deal with the flowers, and it's really just shining for me as a foliage plant or um, a little bit of a ground cover, a really pretty border plant. So I have this Helen Von Stein lamb's ear in a group, and I started with, I would say, about three plants here and then it all joined together to make a really nice solid mat. The texture is just beautiful. Um, and it's really accenting this lavender granite wall here. It's right up against the edge. So I've transformed this garden at my house a few times. Um, it started as a flower bed and now it's really transitioned into a herb and vegetable garden. And there's a few cutting flowers in there. But this was here when I had it just as an ornamental bed. And I, I left it here because it's done so well. And I do like to use it for some you know, dried uh, crafts. So it's a nice spot for me to be able to harvest here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But planting tips is, is that you definitely want some well-drained soil. It doesn't like to have wet feet. Um, it is a pretty drought tolerant plant, so it doesn't require a lot of water. And um, you really don't need to do much to it. You know, I will say that I love leaving this plant for the winter. It looks so pretty with snow and ice sitting on it. Really complements this gray foliage here. Um, but in the spring, it tends to get really soggy and mushy. So all I do is I trim it right down to the base and then it will flush out again with its beautiful foliage. So it does prefer full sun. Um, however, with that said, it's really in a partial sun spot right here um, and it's done pretty well. So very versatile, very hardy, and we all love plants like that. So the second part of the video is how to dry this lovely foliage and bring it inside for some crafts. Um, and my number one tip for doing that is you wait for a dry, sunny day. You don't want any um, rain on it. You want all the water to be evaporated off of the foliage. You want them very dry because they do tend to hold a lot of water. So then all I do is take my scissors or my pruners and I've got this nice little basket here 
and I'm just going to go ahead and clip my leaves as long as I can. And I'm going to do quite a few of these because I'm really excited about doing a holiday wreath this year. So I'm trying to pick the, be the best leaves also. I have some that are a little chewed here. And I will say it is pretty um, insect, rodent, deer resistant. I don't typically see many problems with this plant, which makes it another winner. going to spread the wealth here. I don't want to just trim from one side of the plant because like I said, I am going to leave this plant for some winter interest. And then get some different sizes. I have also heard people call this big ears, which it is a pretty large leaf here. The other variety that threw up the flowers um, had a much smaller leaf, so I also do love this about the Helen von Stein, is it really is a larger leaf, which I think makes a bigger impact. This plant also would be really terrific for a sensory garden. Um, I think little kids would really love this and it is a, a safe plant. It has such a nice feel to it. Okay, so two ways to dry this. Um, of course, you can make your bundles and you can hang them to dry. But my tip for making the bundles is you don't really want to make the bundles that big. So I would say just do a few stems. And if you're thinking about diameter of the bundle, I would not go any wider than an inch or an inch and a half because they are a bigger leaf and you really do want them to get some good air circulation. So I'm going to hang a few of these on my rack. You can either use rubber bands or I like to use raffia, ribbon, twine. Um, that doesn't really matter so much, but what does matter is you hang them in a dry or room temperature spot that doesn't get a lot of sunlight. So I'll hang a few of these. And then the other way to dry them is just to put them on a drying rack or a screen. Um, I have a big recycled screen that I'm going to use and I'm just going to lay them out on the screen. I'll show you some pictures of that, not touching. And I'm going to lay most of them with the vein up, so the soft um, area down, facing down. Hi everyone, I'm back today showing you um, the process of drying the lamb's ear. So I've had some um, of the big ear, the Helen von Stein lamb's ear that we were talking about drying on a screen here. And I wanted to show you how they're drying because it's been about a week. Um, and I did talk about how if you put them fuzzy side down, they're going to be uh, straighter and more intact. And so you can see the difference between the face down lamb's ear and then the fuzzy side um, or face up have really curled, like I mentioned. Um, so I don't mind having a few that are curled because I am gonna do 
probably some wreaths or some gift wrapping with my lamb's ear. Um, but for the most part, I really prefer the leaves that are drying a little more intact. So like I said, it's been about a week. They do, the leaves do hold quite a bit of moisture, so it's gonna take a minimum of two weeks to finish drying these. And I also have some bunches that are hanging, so I really can't wait to get my hands on these dried beauties and start making some winter crafts.